The ship's mast groans under the weight of the open sails. A light wind moves the boat towards new horizons, new hope, and the new world. When Columbus discovered America, the world changed forever. At the end of the 15th century, European colonization of unknown inviting land, storing precious treasures, unexplored secrets, and great danger began. Some of you know how difficult it is to build a camp for several people on an expedition. You spend a lot of time setting up tents, making bonfires, gathering firewood, and cooking. Now imagine how difficult it is to create a large colony and build a city. And what about the country? You have no connection to the continent, the internet, or modern technology. You obtain food supplies and building materials on the island through hard work or wait for several months until a large ship reaches you. And there's no guarantee that it will come. It can get caught in a storm, go off course, or disappear mysteriously. Europeans were living in such conditions for centuries when they were colonizing the New World and building the United States of America. In addition to the obvious risks and dangers, they faced something sinister and unknown. For example, there were cases when entire colonies disappeared without a trace, and no one knew what happened to them. Perhaps they awakened something evil and inexplicable, or got lost in the forests of early America, or something much worse. One such case occurred with the Roanoke colony at the end of the 16th century. So far, none of the scientists and researchers have solved the mystery of the tragic disappearance of about a hundred people. In 1587, a group of settlers consisting of 115 people, with John White as their leader, was rapidly approaching the shores of America on a large cargo ship. John stared forward confidently. He was determined to establish a new territory for his country and build a house for his family. Besides experienced sailors, travelers, and builders on board the ship, there was John White's wife and his daughter with her husband. They all sailed to an island called Roanoke. This piece of land was a fort and, in the future, would be the beginning of modern North Carolina. However, John White didn't know yet at what price it would be done. The group leader was confident in his abilities because this was not the first attempt to establish a colony there. The first two times the British tried to build a fort post on the island ended with a series of failures. A lack of food supplies and other problems prevented colonization. But not everything was so bad. The previous settlers learned that there were precious metals somewhere on the island, and anyone who found them would become wealthy. Everything was supposed to work out this time. John White was sure of it and was prepared for the new attempt. So at last, the ship docked to the shore. The whole crew got to the ground. Everyone was excited about new opportunities on the new land, so they quickly started building a new home. John White supervised the construction, explored the island, and established contacts with the natives. The settlers spent every day working hard, building houses, making fires, and cooking food. And despite the difficult conditions, the team settled in, and John White's daughter gave birth to a daughter. However, soon, the standards of living began to deteriorate. Cold weather was approaching, and the supplies of food and building materials were quickly running out. Remembering the experience of the previous settlers, John White decided not to bring the situation to a critical point, so he went to England to get provisions in advance. He calculated that he could return before people ran out of supplies, so he left his wife, daughter, and granddaughter in Roanoke. He set off on a month-long journey back to England with a small team. Always keeping in mind that his family was waiting for him on the island, he came to the residence of Queen Elizabeth I immediately upon arrival to ask for a new cargo of food. However, while he was sailing to England, some events happened that interfered with his plans. His country came into conflict with Spain. The Queen ordered the return of all ships sailing for the New World. She decided to gather a fleet to fight the opponent. The shipment of provisions to the island where John White's family lived was cancelled. It's not known how the group leader reacted to these events, but he probably went crazy because of his inability to fix anything. Using all his connections and influence, John White managed to get a ship with provisions. However, it happened only three years after his return to England. He understood that the settler supplies had most likely run out by this time, 
and he had no idea what had happened to his family. With a new team, he quickly set off for the new world. A few months later, he saw the familiar outlines of the shore. The closer the ship got to the land, the more John White's excitement grew. He looked through a spyglass, but saw no signs of life on the island. When he came ashore, he immediately ran towards the settlement. He found houses they had built together destroyed. All trunks were looted. There was an ominous silence and no people. The colony seemed to have disappeared. John White realized something bad had happened to his people and his family. Perhaps they went somewhere in search of food supplies. Or maybe someone or something made them run away. England started several investigations to find out what had happened, but didn't get any answers. The only clue John White found was the word Croatoan scratched into a wooden post. For centuries, historians have been trying to unravel the disappearance of the colony. They put forward different versions. Some believed that the local tribes had attacked the colony, and others thought the settlers had gone inland in search of food and had just gotten lost. There was also a version that local tribes had put a curse on people and they had faced some phantom sinister force. However, the first version seemed the most realistic because Croatoan meant the name of the island where the tribes lived. Perhaps they waited until John White left the settlement and attacked the British. Of course, this version was also tested. People visited the island but found no traces of settlers there. And locals said they hadn't seen the disappeared colony. According to another version, the settlers tried to return to England after waiting for John White for some time. They were unsure whether the leader would come back, so they decided not to wait for the supplies to finish and went to England on the ships of other settlers sailing there. Who knows, maybe they got into a storm and disappeared at sea. Perhaps they met Spaniards with whom the British had a conflict. But all these are guesses that have no evidence. We would have never known what happened to the Roanoke colony if, in 2012, Elizabethan era researchers hadn't discovered the mark of an unknown fort drawn in invisible ink on John White's map. That place was only 50 miles from Roanoke. After discovering the new clue, archaeologists traveled to North Carolina to find a secret fort. They arrived at the place and found many fragments of English pottery lying on the ground. Among them, there were pots and jars for storing and cooking food. There was also a Native American village not far from this location. There's a version that the colony split up. One group went to the island of Croatoan to wait for John White. Before that, they scratched this word on a tree as a hint. The second group went deep into the country and settled in that secret place marked on the map. In the future, researchers may find definite answers to all these questions. But until that happens, the disappearance of the Roanoke colony is still one of the most famous mysteries in American history. Here's a random thought. Try to imagine the animals that could become the new top species should humans go extinct, that is. <laughs> Tricky, right? I mean, we are pretty cool with our high intelligence, fashion sense, ability to cook, and smartphones even if we forget the password sometimes. But if we suddenly disappeared, what animals might evolve to develop our skills and build complex societies like we have? Or would they come up with something better? Scientists have some ideas, thanks to modern gene sequencing technology and our understanding of evolution. We know that the climate on the planet will continue to change, so many species will need to adapt to survive. Convergence which is when two unrelated organisms end up developing similar traits to succeed in a particular environment or fill a niche, will also play a big role. For example, fish are perfected for life in water with their torpedo-like bodies and fins. But dolphins have evolved a very similar body, even though they're warm-blooded, air-breathing mammals with a completely different evolutionary background. So, maybe some animals could develop hands similar to ours to fill the same role as humans, like building cities and modifying the environment. Primates like chimpanzees and bonobos are already close to that with their opposable thumbs, which they use to make tools in the wild. It's also possible that birds, the only surviving dinosaurs, could become the new smartest animals if humans suddenly disappear. Birds are incredibly brainy and can flock together in large groups. 
Some, such as sociable weavers, even build communal nesting sites, though they may not look like human metropolises. And let's not forget octopuses, which are probably the smartest non-human animals on Earth. They can learn to distinguish between real and virtual objects and engineer their environment. However, adapting to life on land might be tricky for them. You see, there's a lot we don't know about animal intelligence. And let's be honest, we humans have been quite arrogant about it throughout history. In the past, people used to think that animal intelligence could be neatly organized into a hierarchy, with humans at the top and insects at the bottom. But in the 1960s, a new generation of researchers challenged this idea and suggested that intelligence should be measured in relative rather than absolute terms. As technology has improved, we've been able to see animals for longer without disturbing them, and we've discovered they are far more intelligent than we once thought. For example, researchers in Melbourne are using remote-controlled drones to study the breeding patterns of southern right whales, and artificial intelligence is helping us track and predict the movements of all sorts of creatures. It's funny how we tend to recognize intelligence in animals when their behavior is similar to our own. Dolphins, for example, use names and even have accents. In fact, researchers have found that dolphins in southern Brazil have developed a distinct accent after interacting with local fishers for over 100 years. But it's not just mammals that are intelligent. Birds and insects are pretty smart, too. Parrots, for example, have complex social groups and can differentiate between members of their species based on their relationships with each other. And even though their brains are tiny, like mine, insects are capable of some pretty impressive cognitive feats, like tool use and learning by observation. We used to think that intelligence was unique to humans and maybe a few other primates, but now we know that's not the case. In fact, research has shown that intelligence is distributed in different ways across the animal kingdom. Some animals excel in one area, but may not be as good in another. It's all about the environmental pressures that each species faces and how they adapt to them. We all know about the usual suspects when it comes to high intelligence in the animal kingdom. Chimps, dogs, dolphins, blah blah blah. But there are some unexpected additions to the list that might surprise you. And you might even have one of them napping in your lap right now. I'm talking about our feline friends, house cats. They're renowned masters of getting treats and avoiding baths. But did you know they're also pretty smart? Cats have an amazing ability to learn from observation and repetition, which is why we've coined the term copycats. And some cats, like the one in this next story named Nora, take it to the next level. Nora's owner spends her days teaching kids to play piano, and this cat was getting a little jealous of all the attention they were receiving. So what did she do? She watched them closely, picked up on their movements, and started tapping away at the keys herself. And you know what? It worked. Nora's owner and the kids were amazed, and Nora became a little bit of a piano sensation. She even sits at the piano like a proper piano student. Just because she doesn't have opposable thumbs doesn't mean she can't be a musical prodigy. But wider paws would help to hit those octaves. The next story is about rats. Now don't jump on the couch in fear just yet. And before you go calling them pests, did you know that some rats are actually helping save lives? Researchers in Africa have been training these furry little detectives to sniff out lung disease in saliva samples. And they're really good at it, too. These rats have a nose for the job and can detect different scents that are needed to show whether a sample contains a certain bacterium or not. Now, you might be wondering why rats were chosen for this important job. It's because they're super smart and quick learners. These rats go through a series of training exercises to learn how to sniff out different samples. They then alert their trainers to which samples hold bacteria. And get this, they can do it in just 7 minutes a task that would take a human scientist a full day of testing, these rats can do in a fraction of the time. Dr. Rat. Ooh. Now, ever heard of Nelly the pig? She's surely not your average swine. This clever piggy has proved that animal intelligence goes way beyond just performing tricks. Nelly was presented with a series of challenges, including putting differently shaped items through a hoop. Now, while she was being taught to put round objects through a round hoop, Nelly decided to take it to the next level. When presented with objects that weren't round, she compared their shape with a hoop before deciding they wouldn't fit. 
this pig has some serious problem-solving skills. It's fascinating to see how pig brains process spatial awareness and solve different tasks. Who knew these curly-tailed creatures were such smarty pants? Now, elephants are probably some of the most amazing animals on Earth, not just because of their looks. They are not only cute, but they're also super smart and empathetic. These gentle giants are known for their incredible cooperation and coordination skills, which they use to protect their families and scare away their enemies. In the wild, elephants travel in clans and communicate with each other using low-frequency rumbles. They work together to keep their young ones safe from predators, and they're not afraid to show their dominance by kidnapping calves from competing clans. Researchers have found out that elephants are quick learners and can work together to achieve a common goal. They even show empathy toward each other, which is a pretty rare feature in the animal kingdom. For instance, elephants have a special interest in the remains of their own kind. They'll linger near elephant bones and investigate sticks of ivory much longer than they would pieces of wood. Also, when an elephant is feeling upset, other elephants will come to comfort it by stroking its head with their trunks or even putting their trunk in its mouth. Now, how sweet is that? In 2010, one elephant in particular really impressed scientists with his skills. He was seeing eyeing some tasty fruit just out of his trunk's reach. After pondering for a few days, he had his aha moment. He discovered a large plastic block and used it as a stepping stool to reach the fruit. He continued to use his newfound tool skills to reach even higher places, stacking blocks to get his favorite treat. Now, by this time, you've surely heard about strange phenomena happening in the Bermuda Triangle, like strong waves or even a vortex from time to time. But there's another territory equally as mysterious, only this time it's on land. It's called the Bennington Triangle. Some have argued that there must be some inexplicable force wreaking havoc here in this region responsible for disappearances and unexplained phenomena. This location is also connected to Native American folklore, which further adds to its mystery. For some events, there are perfectly rational explanations. For others, we've yet to find out the truth. But let's start looking at this region's history. The unusual triangle is located in southwestern Vermont in the United States. Before any weird occurrences took place here, the area was occupied by the Abenaki tribe, first discovered in the 1600s. They were indigenous people that we know have lived throughout portions of Canada and the U.S. Their beliefs were strongly connected to the local weather. The Abenaki people thought one of their major spirits, named Tabuldak, lived on the peak of the Glassbury Mountain. Since the winds here tend to be pretty fussy, these tribespeople believed Tabuldak created a dangerous creature made out of rocks on these peaks, meant to scare people away. Years later, in the 1700s, this region became the location for a town called Glastonbury. It reached its peak popularity in the 19th century. But even then, the population never exceeded 250 people. These days, it is nothing more than a ghost town, with only four families living here in 2000. Sure, on one hand, the town was flooded in its entirety at one point, so this may be a reason why people chose to leave the area. But there is more. To this day, many felonies that happened here have yet to be solved. One story speaks of a man that attacked a co-worker, claiming he heard voices telling him to do so. Another one tells the story of a man that eventually lost his life after going hunting, despite no one being around him at the time, not even wildlife. Then there's the legend of a local wild man who was known to scare people in the towns of Bennington and Glastonbury. Nobody knew who he was or where he came from. He just appeared every once in a while, dressed in a black coat, terrorizing people using various devices, and then retreated to the forest. Today, the Bennington Triangle is mostly known for six unusual disappearances. They all happened between the years 1945 and 1950, soon after the town of Glastonbury was removed from official records by the state of Vermont. The first disappearance was that of Carl Herrick. He was out hunting with his cousin near Glastonbury Mountain. He was never found by local rescuers. Then there was another reported disappearance, that of an experienced hunter and hiker named Middle Rivers. Local authorities have no idea to this day what might have happened in this case. A college student named Paula Weldon 
soon had the same fate. Probably the most famous disappearance is that of James Tedford. He was last seen on a bus full of people. Witnesses from that day don't even remember him exiting the vehicle. Paul Jepson is also known to have vanished from this area. He was working on his family farm when he disappeared without a trace. His relatives recounted him telling them he was headed to Glassbury Mountain Forest before it happened. Ooh, spooky. Is there any connection between these events? Locals believe so, and weirdly enough, it has to do with the color red. Since at least two of the people that went missing here were last seen wearing this color, it became a local legend. People traveling through this area avoid wearing red to this day, in hopes they avoid whatever creature or natural phenomena might be targeting this color. Timing may have something to do with it too. Most of the people that were lost here were last seen late in the afternoon, between 3 p.m. and 4 p.m. Bottom line, the most reasonable explanation behind the legend of the Bennington Triangle is its unusual weather. Even Native Americans that used to roam these areas thought that on top of the mountain was a meeting point of four winds, bound to eternally struggle with each other. Turns out there is some truth to this myth, as the wind direction on the mountain is unstable, making plants grow at strange angles. These conditions are known to often confuse even the most experienced hikers. The forest here is also wildly dense and filled with dangerous animals. Places like Bermuda or Bennington Triangle became famous for their mysterious disappearances, which may have some reasonable explanation behind them. But a whole train going missing? Back in 1911, a regular train was supposed to leave from a railway station in Rome, Italy. It was meant to reach the city of Milan. Surprisingly, none of the 106 passengers ever made it to the destination, and they were also never seen again. You can't help but wonder, were they really lost forever? Weirdly enough, it may not be the case based on some local folklore. As it was completing its journey, the train was supposed to pass through a long tunnel. It did enter it, but nothing ever came out the other end of the tunnel. Nothing was left of the train, and it seemed like it simply just vanished into thin air. Out of all the people on board, a mere two were found, but they were quite unwell at the time they were discovered. Also, the story they told did not seem to make much sense. They remembered a dense fog that took over the entirety of the train. To escape, they jumped out of the windows because they got so scared. Fifteen years later, a story emerged about a group of 104 Italian people that appeared all of a sudden in Mexico City, claiming they arrived by train from Rome. Now, if that's not weird enough, this story appears to have been reported back in 1845 which was 66 years before the train had even departed in the first place. Turns out this whole story was nothing but a local urban legend that originated in a piece of literature. But it did get an amazing amount of popularity. Speaking of the Bermuda Triangle, I was, wasn't I? Yes, I was. It's not the only place on Earth where ships go missing. It's just the most popular. Whenever a ship happens to sink, you'd expect at least to find pieces of it on the bottom of the sea, right? Well, not if you're traveling through Lake Superior, located along the border of the United States and Canada. This one gained popularity due to a large number of ships that went missing while sailing it. It may have something to do with the stormy winds, similar to what happens in the Bennington Triangle. Of course, that doesn't explain why some ships simply vanish altogether, without a single piece of them ever to be found not even at the bottom of the lake. It does gather a lot of tourists each year, though, looking to scuba dive and see the remains of some of the ships that still lie here. The bottom of this lake even contains what's left of the famous SS Edmund Fitzgerald. Back when it departed on June 7, 1958, it was the largest ship on North America's Great Lakes. And to this day, it's still the largest ship ever to have sunk in the area. Why this ship sank in the first place is yet another mystery. Yosemite National Park is one of the most popular natural resorts in the world, but it does hide dark secrets of its own. Despite its beauty and abundance of wildlife, a total of 45 people went missing right here in this location and were never found again. There are even stories of people that disappeared from one area of the park only to be stumbled upon in a completely different location, with some of their clothes missing, no less. 
This hasn't stopped the over 3 million people from visiting the park each year. But many of them do dress in layers. 